In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Uh, good morning and welcome to our service on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, as we now come towards the end of this year, the liturgical year, Year C. I hope you all enjoyed your extra hour in bed on uh, last night, or Saturday night, depending when you're watching us. Uh, it's good to have you join us wherever you are. And so, now let us start with our first hymn. Gathered together as God's family, let us ask for forgiveness from the Heavenly Father, for God is full of gentleness and compassion. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we sing the glory.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts and saints. Grant to us the same faith and power of love, that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading to the se of the second letter to the Thessalonians. To the Church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and mercy to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with the everlasting destruction and shut out from the pressure from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marvelled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony to you. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may count you worthy of his calling and that by his power you may be, fulfil every good purpose of yours and every act prompted by your faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was but on account of the crowd he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome Jesus. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to the guest, be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he is too a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So Jesus continues his progress towards Jerusalem and reaches Jericho where he meets the senior tax collector Zacchaeus, improbably sitting in a tree. When Jesus says he intends to visit his house that day, Zacchaeus is so overjoyed that he spontaneously says he will give half his property to the poor and pay back four times the amount 
to anyone he is cheating. This extraordinary story is in marked contrast to the incident just a few verses before, in which a rich young man asks Jesus what he must do to inherit eternal life. When Jesus eventually says the one thing that he lacks is that he must give his riches to the poor, the rich young man went away sad because he was a man of great wealth. Jesus is coming closer and closer to Jerusalem where the purpose of his mission to the world will come into sharp focus. He knows that he will have to give his life. He knows that he will have to give it soon. In the face of this stark reality, material possessions are things of little account. Of course, material possessions were of little account to Jesus anyway. But as the events of his passion and death loom towards him, he urgently stresses to those who wish to follow him that they too should detach themselves from the things of this world. For Jesus, wealth is an encumbrance. It ties you down, brings responsibilities, it preoccupies a person too much. Jesus tells us to concentrate on the essentials, on the things that are really important. He tells us to love God with all our hearts. He tells us to see that justice is done. He tells us to love the poor. He tells us that self-sacrifice is the way to lasting glory. In the kingdom of God, everything is turned upside down. The last are first and the first are last. The humble and the poor and those with a low reputation are brought up to the head of the table. The aristocratic, rich, young member of a leading family who has kept all the commandments goes away sad that the crooked old tax collector stuck up a tree, especially sought out by Jesus, who pays him honour by visiting his house that day. This is things being turned upside down. This is the kingdom of God breaking in our world. There are three characters in the story, Jesus, Zacchaeus and the complainers. Jesus invites himself to Zacchaeus' house. Zacchaeus is in the tree and Jesus looks up at him. A beautiful illustration of the way in the kingdom everything is opposite to the way they are in this world. According to our way of thinking, the son of man, the son of God, would ordinarily look down on a sinner. Because of the circumstances, Jesus looks up to Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus is certainly unworthy. He is a crooked tax collector, a senior one and so despised by all the people. He has compromised his patriotic and religious principles and collaborated with the Romans in order to have the privilege of creaming off a percentage for himself. He knows this. He knows his own sins better than anyone else. But Zacchaeus is curious about Jesus. He climbs the tree in order to catch a glimpse of him. And this curiosity leads to the extraordinary encounter with Jesus who asks to come to visit his house. Zacchaeus experiences conversion. The request of Jesus has an overwhelming impact on him. But this holy man of God, Jesus wants to bless him with his presence, makes Zacchaeus want to respond in an extraordinary way by relinquishing his ill-gotten gains and becoming a benefactor of the poor. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house. The scenario is clear. Sinfulness followed by curiosity, followed by an encounter with the Lord, followed by conversion, followed by repentance. Complainers, on the other hand, are envious. They are not open to change and have no sense of their own sinfulness. They are too mean-spirited to give thanks to God for the remarkable transformation that has occurred in Zacchaeus. According to them, Zacchaeus has benefited from his corrupt way of life and enjoyed great wealth and yet now receives even more honour for giving it all away. They just can't understand it. They can't understand it because they are looking at Zacchaeus in his situation rather than thinking of their own sinfulness and their own need to implore the mercy of God. They don't have his wealth, but they wouldn't have minded it. They would have been just like him if they could have managed it. They see no miracle. All they see is unfairness. Their selfishness has blinded them to the marvellous works of God going right under their nose. We face the choice of whether to join Zacchaeus or to join the complainers. Jesus is in our midst. He wants to come home with us today. He wants to be in our homes. Are we looking over shoulders at what others have gained 
Or do we meet Jesus in the eye and spontaneously repent of our sins and give our excess to the poor? That is the question that confronts us today. It is a question that will not go away. Let us pray that we will have the courage and the open heartedness to embrace the salvation that Jesus so freely offers to us. Let us declare our faith in God as we say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Lord, Help us to explore the virtue of humility and keep ourselves forever in your light. Hear our prayers we bring before you. We pray for the church, for ministers and all those who witness and live out the gospel in their lives. On Tuesday the 1st of November we observe All Saints Day. We pray to the saints and ask them to inspire us to lead faithful devoted lives, to overcome adversity and be joyful messengers of the Christian faith. Lord, in your mercy. As our country welcomes a new Prime Minister, we pray that Rishi Sunak will lead us demonstrating mindful intellect and displaying virtues of empathy, understanding and truthfulness, restoring our trust in government. Lord, in your mercy. As Putin continues to threat of a nuclear strike, we pray that people close to him will persuade him to act with caution, care and respect for the worldwide community. Lord, in your mercy. As the clocks go back, we pray for a safe and secure winter. Let us remember those that are homeless, hungry and in need of shelter and warmth. Let us be beacons of light, helping those most in need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick, for Margaret, Joseph, Harry, baby Lee, baby George and Noah, Helena, Pauline, Phil, Robert, Bill, Rachel, Mark, Anne, Dominic, Sylvia, Melanie and Marco. Bring healing to all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. As we approach the commemoration of all, for the, of all the faithful departed, all souls, we pray for those that have recently departed this life and are now seated in heaven, particularly for Brenda, Sylvia, Grenville, Carl, Irene and Mike. We turn our attention to their loved ones. May the Holy Spirit comfort and be beside them through their loss. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, help us always to choose you and put you first. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Thank you, Father, for making us in our wonderful world. Wherever we are in your world, we should always thank you through Jesus, your Son. So with the angels and everyone in heaven, together we say, Great and wonderful Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took bread, he thanked you, broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. Jesus thanked you, gave it to the friends gathered there, saying, All of you drink from this cup. Because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So loving Father, remembering how dearly Jesus loves us, we should love him too. Send your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, on us and on these gifts, so that everyone who eats and drinks this bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, we may be full of your life and goodness. Help us to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives for him. All honour and glory belong to you, Father, through Jesus your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
So let us pray. Lord of heaven, in this Eucharist you have brought us near to an innumerable company of angels and to the spirits of the saints made perfect. As in this food of our earthly pilgrimage we have shared their fellowship, so may we come to share their joy in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our post-communion hymn. Been good to join with you today and uh, I hope that you'll stay safe during this next week. Uh, if you are local on the 12th of November uh, at Trevurban Community Hall I'm organising a Cornish evening with members of Leveni Male Voice Choir and that's going to be a charity night raising money for Fleet. Uh, that's in Trevurban Community Hall, tickets from myself or the hall. Um, and that starts at 7.30. So the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.